think you're in for a real treat today uh, because as you all know, the, the Super Bowl is going to be here in just a few short months. And there's a whole bunch of planning, there's a whole bunch of things going on and we thought it would be a really good idea for you to get kind of a behind the scenes look at all the things that you can expect when the Super Bowl comes to Minnesota here next February. Uh, if you don't know it, you'll find out here quickly, Bloomington is going to be a very big part of Super Bowl 52. Uh, whether it's the, the, the teams actually competing in the Super Bowl uh, will likely be staying here, or events happening at Mall of America, or things happening in all the other hotels, uh, Bloomington is going to be uh, very, a very big part of this. And so uh, we asked um, someone from the host committee, and if you don't know what the host committee is, it's the, the group that stands between the NFL and the community where the, where the Super Bowl uh, is going to happen. It's a, it's a large group of folks. Uh, we have the Vice President of Communications here today to give us an overview of Super Bowl 52. And so with that, Andrea Makros, uh, the floor is yours. All right, well, he gets that set up. I'm gonna take a moment of personal privilege here and say that I always love coming to Rotary Clubs uh, because long before Nicholas was even born, I was actually a Rotary Exchange student. Um, from Milwaukee. I went to Brussels, Belgium for a year. Um, so I am grateful to all of you for the work that you continue to do in supporting exchange students because I would say, at least for me, it, it changed my life in the direction uh, that I took completely. So I hope the same for you, Nicholas, and thank you for all the work that you all do. Um, so I'm here today on behalf of the Super Bowl host committee, and what a fun topic. I love to get to, <laughs> to talk about this with groups around the state. I should know this by heart now. I think we're 257 days. <laughs> not, not that we keep account. It's actually on our website if you log on. Um, so that it's coming up very fast. And I've actually been at this for almost two years already planning this. Because as we like to say, um, you can't just drop a million people in the market and expect it's all going to work itself out. So it takes a tremendous amount of planning, uh, particularly uh, with your chief and other folks in the city of Bloomington. Uh, because Bloomington is going to be a hub of activity for us. Um, so I want to start by noting that we are the Minnesota Super Bowl host committee, not Minneapolis, not even Twin Cities, because um, it is really important to us that this be a statewide event. It's not too often that something like this comes to our backyard. It's been 26 years, in fact, um, since it was last in Minnesota in 1992. And I think the Super Bowl has changed drastically since then. Uh, I don't know how many of you remember the halftime show that year. It involved Brian Boitano, so I'm just going to leave it right there. Um, <laughs> so uh, the Super Bowl has changed tremendously, and we're really looking forward to um, having it in our, our own backyard again. So, yep, our, our name is Minnesota, and we take that very seriously. And we are Super Bowl 52, uh, which is another number that we like to have fun with. So 52 weeks in a year, so what better way to spend an entire year uh, promoting the Super Bowl? I hope this is not the first you're hearing of it. Uh, we've been quite active. Uh, since we accepted that handoff from, uh, from the commissioner in Houston and we were on the clock. Uh, so we're up and running with that 257 days. So with that, I'll start with a little video just to give you a sense of what we're working on. So as you saw, we're calling ourselves the Bold North. Uh, we figure you got to lean into it. You can't really hide February in Minnesota. So, <laughs> so we are owning winter, and we are really going to lean into it and give folks an experience unlike that they normally have at a Super Bowl. Most Super Bowls are in Arizona, Miami. And when you fly into Miami, they say, great, you're in Miami. See you on Sunday. Uh, but we instead are really going to take advantage of this opportunity to showcase everything that we have to offer, why we all choose to live here, this, you know, which seems a little counterintuitive sometimes, and I'm sure we all doubt ourselves once or twice during the winter. Um, but we really want to lean into that experience and make it a unique and memorable event. 
Uh, when we get the chance to talk to reporters who've covered you know, 20, 30 Super Bowls, they all talk to us about that 92 Super Bowl and tell us how they went snowmobiling on Lake Minnetonka or they went ice fishing uh, on White Bear Lake. And those are incredible memories that really set us apart from those other warm weather markets. And so we really want to lean into it and take advantage of it uh, and showcase all that we have to offer. Uh, there's more than 5,000 media that come as part of the Super Bowl. Only about half of them are sports reporters, actually. So the other half are business reporters, lifestyle, entertainment reporters. So what an incredible opportunity to showcase not just you know, our amazing stadium, but our great restaurant, great art scene, you know, the celebrities that you never knew were from Minnesota or that still call this home. So we're really going to take advantage of every bit of that. And it has grown since 92 from just a one-day game into a 10-day celebration. So I'll walk you through that. So as I mentioned, Super Bowl 52, and we're taking full advantage of every one of those, that number 52, you'll hear it a lot. So 52 weeks of giving, and I'll go over all this as we go through the presentation. So we're counting down to the Super Bowl by um, traveling the state over the course of the 52 weeks, uh, presenting 52 grants to organizations across the state celebrating it with 52 amazing Minnesotans. Again, using this as an opportunity to tell our story, uh, not just to us, but to all the folks who tune in as a result of thinking about coming to the Super Bowl here. Highlighting 52 amazing companies and then 52 weeks of celebration throughout. So we go to the next slide. Uh, so as I mentioned, it's more than a game. It's 10-day festival. More than a million people come over the course of the 10 days. So Houston this last year had 1.3 million. We like to compare ourselves to the Indianapolis Super Bowl, which is in 2012, a very similar market in scale and scope. They also have their stadium right downtown, which is pretty unique. They had 1.1 million visitors over the course of the 10 days, so we're pretty confident in this number. Um, you know, the mall hosts 200, a quarter of a million people on the day after uh, Thanksgiving as part of Black Friday, so we know that this is a market capable of, of hosting it and doing it well. Um, so as I mentioned, 5,000 media. We're going to need more than 10,000 volunteers, and I will come back to that. And again, it's our opportunity to really showcase the bold north. I always use, and I'm sorry to use a Packer analogy here, although I'm from Wisconsin, so. Uh, <laughs> you know, when, during the, <laughs> there, I got some fans. Um, during the Vikings-Packer game last year, uh, they were coming back from commercial and they were panning the downtown skyline. And clearly somebody had taken Joe Buck out to a really good dinner the night before because he, you know, as they were panning the skyline, he said, Minneapolis, land of great people, great restaurants. It's like, that's exactly what we want out of this. We want that national audience to hear that story. So whoever took Joe Buck out to dinner, God bless you. Uh, so I'm going to need 5,000 people to take reporters out to, <laughs> out to a good dinner during that 10 days. Uh, so we'll keep going. So over the course of the 10 days, it's not just Super Bowl events. So the NFL comes to town with their signature events that they take from Super Bowl to Super Bowl. And then we as the host committee will also host a number of events around town that really that are focused on welcoming the community in. And then we're also partnering with those traditional signature Minnesota events that take place during the winter. So things like the Lopit, the Polar Plunges, et cetera, so again, to really embrace our winter lifestyle here. Uh, so the NFL official events that come. So NFL opening night used to be known as Media Day. It's now an evening celebration. It's where the two teams each meet the press for the first time and take questions. They go at separate times because, God forbid, they see each other before the game. Um, so each of the teams comes in separately. They actually sit at the, each on their own little stage, and this is now done in arenas. And everybody in the arena gets a radio, so you can tune into Channel 1 to hear the quarterback or tune into Channel 2 to hear the coach answering questions. Uh, and they actually have a concert in between the two teams, again, so that they may leave without seeing the other. So it's a great event. It'll be taking place on the Monday night. Uh, the location is still being finalized. Radio Row is actually where from Monday to Friday of that week leading up to the game, it's where all of the broadcasters, so whether it's ESPN Radio, Sirius Radio, all those national sports stations and others come to town and set up shop in kind of a public uh, space. So you can see your favorite uh, football player or celebrity being interviewed live on the air. Um, so it's a really great free way to interact with all the folks coming to town. The Super Bowl experience, this used to be called NFL experience, it's kind of like Disney World for football fans. So this will be in the Minneapolis Convention Center. Uh, it's, you know, 400,000 square feet of everything from, you know, take, a, take your pass, come, you know, run against a quarterback or a player, um, see football is being made. Nickelodeon always has a slime station where you can get slime. I am not signing up for that. Um, so it's a fun interactive experience. It's about a $35 ticket, so very family friendly. You can spend your whole day there. Uh, Taste of the NFL is an uh, annual event that raises money for hunger relief in the market. They bring a chef from each of the team's markets. The teams choose that chef. 
um, and they come and prepare a dish and all the money from that evening goes to hunger relief so that'll stay in uh, Minnesota. This event actually started here in the 92 Super Bowl and it was so successful it's gone through so it's coming back home this time around. And I should mention that the NFL experience actually started here in the 92 Super Bowl as well. It was called Punt, Pass and Kick at the time. Uh, it's now so big that it'll barely fit in our convention center. So our challenge of the host committee is to figure out what is it that we're going to come up with that becomes the thing that goes forward for the next 25 years again. NFL Honors is actually, it's like the Oscars of the NFL. So that's where they prevent their uh, Walter Payton Man of the Year Award, MVP. Uh, it's a live broadcast. Uh, NBC is the broadcaster this year. We're really excited about that because five days after our Super Bowl comes the Winter Olympics, also on NBC. So what a better connection, again, to talk about the bold north here leading right up into the Winter Olympics. Uh, and there'll be a number of charitable events around town as well that the NFL helms. So just a little example of those events. I did not pick the Aaron Rodgers picture, I promise. I'll keep going. Again, some of those other official events that the NFL brings, such as a Women's Summit, Tech Summit, Super Kids Super Sharing, which is one of their charitable events, Unsung Heroes Luncheon, again, one of their charitable events that they host. Uh, and with it comes a number of the NFL's official sponsors who throw rather large parties. Um, this is actually a great revenue stream uh, for us and one of the biggest economic impact generators of, uh, of the event. So these corporate sponsors uh, from ESPN to Mars, Pepsi, uh, come into town, rent out ballrooms like this, and throw pretty incredible parties. And it's a great source of revenue for local vendors, catering companies, photographers, etc. So we're really excited about all of these. And one of our jobs as the host committee is to facilitate them around town, make sure that they see all the venues, that they're getting what they need, and that we're helping them source local companies to supply that so that it's money that stays here in the market. So then we at the host committee are responsible for putting on a couple events as well. And the main one will be called Super Bowl Live. So it'll be in downtown Minneapolis, and think of it as kind of the welcoming point uh, to come into the Super Bowl festivities. So it'll be free and open to the public, uh, downtown Minneapolis activations throughout. So it would be your way, if you just wanna come check it out and see what it's all about, you wanna come to Super Bowl Live. So we'll host uh, concerts in the evening, headline talent, lots of interactive activities throughout downtown. So this will be one of the main points of interaction. And again, it'll be completely free and open to the public. And this is give you a little sense of what that'll look like. Many of the broadcasters will broadcast from there, so we know already ESPN, NBC, NFL Network will be broadcasting live from there throughout the week. So if you ever wanted to see some of your favorite uh, sportscasters or TV personalities, you know, because NBC is our broadcast partner, we're really hoping that somebody like the Today Show might come and broadcast from here. So that'll all be on Super Bowl Live. This is a little image of what it's gonna look like to have those evening concerts downtown with the Lombardi Trophy projected on the buildings. And again, we want to lean into our winter events. So we are partnering. I'm sure most of you have heard that a lot of our winter festivals have come together under the banner of Great Northern. Um, so we are partnering with the Great Northern. These are events that will go on long after the Super Bowl, but we're really excited to align them uh, with our events the year of the Super Bowl so that folks can get that true Minnesota impression from whether it's the Luminary Lopet, which is, I think, something really unique to our market and that we're really proud to showcase. Pond Hockey Tournament, Ice Palace, Polar Plunge. So again, this is that signature Ice Palace that really became the photo op of the 92 Super Bowl. We're hoping to do that again. I know the St. Paul Winter Carnival is working hard to make that happen. So I mentioned earlier that we're doing 52 weeks of giving. It was really important to us that, again, this be a statewide event. And one of the ways that we thought we could do that best uh, was to actually use our charitable giving to connect communities across the state back to this event. So for 52 weeks, we're traveling the state giving grants to local community organizations focused on the health and wellness of kids. So we actually partnered with the State Department of Health to select projects uh, from community councils that they had put forward that had been lingering for some time that needed that last community uh, or that capital grant to put them over the top. One example was we were in International Falls a few weeks ago who have been raising money since 2011 to rebuild their program with, or their playground which had been condemned. Unsafe, the neighborhood didn't have a program at all or a playground at all. They'd been fundraising, collecting pennies and they'd uh, raised $10,000 which is amazing but it was going to take 60000 to build the playground. So we went in a few weeks ago with that last 50000 to put them over the top. So, 52 weeks of traveling the state. Tomorrow we go to Wyndham, next week Alexandria. So touching every corner of the state. So when that game comes on Super Bowl Sunday, people around the state can feel like, hey, I was part of that. I was part of the Super Bowl, which is incredibly important to us. Um, so I'm gonna show a video that tells a little more about our mission of health and wellness. 
We're proud of the life we've built in Minnesota, our communities, our families, our kids. But in a place where we take an active lifestyle for granted, not everyone's getting the message. We're no longer considered the healthiest state in the country. The next generation of Minnesota children is less active and has less access to healthy food. Nearly 70% will drop out of organized sports by the age of 13. And for the first time in history, our children are expected to have shorter life expectancies than us. We need to get our kids moving again, eating better, building lifelong habits. That's why the Minnesota Super Bowl host committee is turning this one day event into a lasting legacy and building a healthier, more active and life changing future for all Minnesota children. For Super Bowl 52, we're creating a 52 week long campaign that focuses on three things that can really help our kids thrive. Fun, fuel, and fundamentals. Help us make life in the bold north the best it can be. Join us and use the excitement for Super Bowl 52 to build a healthier, more active Minnesota for everyone, but especially for our kids. So when it came time to decide what issue we wanted to tackle, uh, we found a number of surveys that had shown that Minnesota had long ranked number one in healthiest kids, but that we'd actually started to slip down that list and we're actually currently at number four, which is not the direction we want to be heading. So this was one area where we thought we could really help be a part of turning that tide. Um, so for the 52 weeks, each of our grants, which are sizable, um, you know, our smallest one has been 38,000, our largest has been 100,000. Um, so for each of those 52 weeks, giving to projects that directly are towards uh, fun, fuel, and fundamentals. So fun is play, and not just organized sports. So it's walking paths, bike paths, uh, playgrounds. Sometimes it is for sports equipment for teams. It really depends on the community need and what the community has said uh, is their biggest need. Um, the fuel is for healthy eating. So we've also funded community garden projects. Um, and each week, so each week on Tuesday, we provide a community grant. And on Wednesday, we provide a grant to a school in that same community for $10,000 to fund the super school breakfast program. So that actually allows these schools to purchase breakfast carts so that kids uh, can get their school breakfast on their way in in the morning and take it to the classroom. Uh, again, just a shocking number for Minnesota that we rank 44th out of 50th in terms of kids who are eligible for free or reduced breakfast but aren't participating in it. So, you know, hundreds of thousands of kids who could get that breakfast for free but aren't taking it, whether, you know, it's because of the stigma of going into the cafeteria when their friends aren't, or they just don't have that time before class starts. So this cart allows them to pick up the breakfast. Everybody gets the breakfast as part of it. They can take it in the classroom, uh, eat it to get their day started because there, as you all know, such a correlation between, you know, healthy eating and starting your day with a nutritious breakfast and your success in school. So. Each community is getting both that community grant as well as the Super School Breakfast Grant for 52 weeks. So, so far we've given over 800,000. We're gonna hit the million dollar mark in just a few weeks. Uh, we've been all over the state, so this gives you a sense of where we've been tomorrow. I'm driving down to Wyndham to give uh, a sizable grant towards a community walking path that they've been working towards for quite some time. So it's been a lot of fun to get to travel the state and see all the excitement. And you know, when you show up with Victor the Viking, who's come to us or come with us to all these, the kids just go crazy. It's been a lot of fun. And seeing Victor ride a bike was something to, <laughs> something to behold. I'm not sure how you balance with that big head on, but he does it pretty well. So this just gives you a sense of we did, the, yep, there he is on the bike in Brainerd. Uh, we did, uh, we gave money to the Lopit in Minneapolis uh, for their winter sports program. Fergus Falls, uh, it's a mobile bike, tr uh, mobile bike uh, cart that takes bikes to each of the schools in Fergus Falls to teach them uh, second graders how to ride bikes. Uh, Rochester, it was again a mobile playground that uh, takes activities to different parks around town so kids can participate. A couple more in Mille Lacs, it was Community Garden. Uh, Worthington, it was equipment for their brand new sports field. E.J. Henderson from the Vikings came down with us and ran those kids through drills and I think they're all ready to sign up for the draft now. Um, Grand Rapids and then Moorhead again with an imagination playground. Gives you a sense of what we've been working on and here's a little bit of our super school breakfast program. So Business Connect is another initiative of the host committee. It's actually something that the NFL has spearheaded for years, but in our true Minnesota tradition, we're seeking to blow it out, <laughs> then knock it out of the park to mix my sports metaphors. Um, so Business Connect is our supplier diversity program to really bring those um, 
minority-owned, women-owned businesses, LGBT-owned businesses, uh, veteran-owned businesses to the forefront. A lot of small businesses who haven't ever competed at this level. So it's actually a training program throughout the year uh, to teach them how to bid on projects, uh, how to pitch themselves, and then we create a directory of about 400 of these uh, diverse businesses to present to the NFL and their partners in the hopes that they will actually be hired uh, whether it's, you know, they're a linen vendor or a porta potty vendor or a photographer, videographer. Again, this is both our way to lift up some of those small businesses in the community as well as prepare them to host events in the future. We have a number of events coming to town, X Games, Final Four. We want to have best in class businesses that are ready to show up and deliver top quality product for all of these events that come to town. We view this as part of our legacy. And also a big way that we're making sure that uh, the economic impact again stays in our market and affects local businesses. Crew 52, this is the one you guys have been waiting for. So this is our volunteer team. Uh, so we put out the ask about a month ago saying that we needed 10,000 volunteers to help us execute uh, the Super Bowl. So that's everything from welcoming guests in the airport to helping them navigate the skyways, because we all know you need some help navigating the skyways, um, to helping us uh, welcome guests on Super Bowl Live as well. So we put out the call and said we needed 10,000 volunteers. In the first 48 hours, we had more than 9,000 people sign up. <laughs> so. Minnesotans are excited. It's going to be a lot of fun. Um, there's training throughout the fall. Uh, we ask that our volunteers commit to three shifts of four to six hours. Those could be during the day. Those could all be during the weekend, whatever works for your schedule. Uh, there'll be a big training in November and a follow-up one in January specific to your role. The biggest benefit is you get a free uniform, and those will be winter-ready uniforms. So we're talking full jacket, hat, mittens, the whole nine yards. So uh, it's a nice little souvenir. Um, we see a lot of folks who were volunteers in 92 who still come with their hat or their scarf and have been hanging on to it because it's a great souvenir. So it's a huge benefit to being part of the team, and what better way to participate in the Super Bowl than actually getting to be part of it. So we're still taking registrations. You can actually go to mnsuperbowl.com if you want backslash crew 52 or you can navigate to it from the front page there's a form that you fill out uh, and they'll contact you we actually do interviews and we do do background checks on all of our volunteers just to make sure that um, since people are going to be placed in places like airports etc um, that we're placing the right people but uh, we do welcome everybody over the age of 18 to participate so again because we love that number crew 52 um, on the next slide you'll see that chad greenway the vikings number 52 signed on to be our captain of the crew 52 team um, so we're carrying that 52 tradition and he will be a big part of our training and um, of our teams this fall. So you'll see him on TV as well. Fox 9 is partnering with us on this effort. So you'll see him on TV quite often. God bless him. He's not afraid to, you know, be funny for the cause. I think he ends up kicking somebody's suitcase in that. I promise no volunteers are going to kick anybody's suitcases. <laughs> um, but as he, he's demonstrating some of the duties that people will be performing. So Leadership 52 is another one of our initiatives, partnering with our sponsor companies uh, to have them each name two rising stars from their companies to be part of our planning committees, uh, both so that we integrate our sponsors into our planning and again as a legacy item so that we're leaving people behind in the community who know what it takes to plan a large scale event like this. Um, and so if we decide to raise our hand for a Super Bowl again or for another large event, we've got an army of people in the community who know how to put this together and make it happen. So it's a great way to involve our sponsors and create another legacy. So what does this all mean aside from hosting an amazing game that everybody will watching on TV? We're expecting about $400 million in direct economic impact left in the community as a result of this event. So a good chunk of that is from all of those companies and others who come into town and spend money on production, on catering, on all the businesses in the community that they need to host their events. Another part of that, about 150 million, is actually from all the tourism that comes, those million visitors, whether they're spending their money um, in a restaurant, in, a, in an Uber or a cab, or on a hotel. So that's money that's staying in our community. We expect about 500 million in earned media. Again, that moment on national television when they pan our skyline and talk about how amazing our community is. Uh, it's an incredible value in promotional for us. As a direct result, we expect to see more tourists and more events come back. Indianapolis, again, that Super Bowl that we think is most parallel to ours, saw a 20% increase in meeting and convention bookings as a direct result of the Super Bowl because once you've hosted a Super Bowl, you can handle anything. Um, and if your market shows well, people say, hey, I want to bring my group back here and be part of this. We also want to use this as an opportunity to recruit more highly skilled employees. I think those of us who, are, who didn't grow up here know that sometimes you think Minnesota, oh, do I really want to go there? And then when people move here, 
They don't want to leave, and I'm one of them. Um, so this is another opportunity for us to showcase why 18 Fortune 500 companies choose to call Minnesota home, why you might want to think about either relocating your business here or accepting a job here, and then our opportunity to leave a legacy through our programs like Business Connect and our Legacy Fund. So with that, I think I got five minutes maybe to answer a couple questions. So just a sense of the companies and the community that have stepped up to be part of hosting the Super Bowl. We are completely privately funded. Um, all of our activities come from raising funds from these corporations to put on our events, so we're very thankful to them. So with that, question or two? Yes? How are you working with the uh, trafficking committee that's addressing some of the downsides? Of sure, that's a really great question. So we're fortunate to have a community that is really ahead of the curve in the work that they're doing on human traffic. As, you know, sadly, this is something that occurs in our community every day. I think we're seeing headlines on a daily basis of things that are going on in our own backyard. So we've got a committee that's actually focused squarely on this issue, led by the Minnesota Women's Foundation, who really has some amazing programming headlines, um, Minnesota Girls Are Not For Sale, and then partnering with uh, both Ramsey County Attorney John Choi and the Hennepin County uh, team to lead a committee of uh, community organizations, so law enforcement, advocacy groups, nonprofits, et cetera, who are all coming together uh, to focus their attention during these 10 days and really use it as an opportunity, not only to address the issue, but to raise awareness on the issue and that it won't just pop up during the Super Bowl and then go away, but really use it as an opportunity to train hotel workers, train other people who are in a forward-facing hospitality position to identify the signs, to know how to act, and then to create community awareness about what to do on a daily basis on these issues. Yes. Is something to talk for downtown crime? Uh, because I think anybody who's coming from outside, that's one statistics they like to know. Sure. I'm sorry, I missed the first part of what you said. Downtown, the is downtown crime, mm -hmm. crime rate, because uh, I may not have the correct information, but it has been increasing. Sure. So that's certainly something we're working very closely with law enforcement on community wide. We've been working with the chief as part of our. Um, law enforcement group to address this, uh, again, issues that happen on a daily basis but may be raised uh, during the Super Bowl. I live in downtown Minneapolis, so I'm certainly you know, well aware of the issues and know that it's something that we need to work on, not just for Super Bowl, but every day to make sure that both residents and visitors are safe. Yep. Um, I know this is probably more of a logistical question, but is there going to be any special transportation to move these million or so people around? Sure. So that's something that we're working really closely with uh, Metro Transit and others on. We want there to be a very smooth traffic pattern. We really want to encourage people to use uh, the uh, public transit that we have available. Having the light rail come out of the Mall of America where they've got a tremendous number of parking lots presents a great jumping off point that we do hope to use, uh, including possibly on game day. Um, so we are working closely with all the communities on a traffic plan and that's actually something that we'll unveil publicly this fall so that people have plenty of time to think about how am I going to get up to work, how am I going to get to the activities I want to go to, um, and how are we directing our guests as, we, as they arrive. Great. Thank you for having me. Thank you. <laughs>